Hello, this is Ryan from Let's Roleplay, and you're watching my channel news for December 27th, 2021. Alright, first off we have to talk about Oblivion. Sound cuts, sound lag, general lag, a whole bunch of shenanigans have been happening. Actually, probably for half of its lifetime, so I started in May, March, May? I think it was May. I think it was May, and then, yeah, for probably half of that time. Uh, every now and then there'd be a video where something would show up. And that has to do with Bandicam. So as you can see on Bandicam, there are three modes. Actually, I cannot show you, because if I do, I would stop the recording. I am using Bandicam to record this. But anyways, there's three modes. They're next to here. There's This is screen capture. Uh, next one is the webcam, which I'm using off and on in the video. And then the one next to it is game recording, capture, whatever it is, game capture recording. Um, so the one I'm using right now, as you can see, this is the worst way to record anything. Uh, well, video games especially. It is the most inefficient way of doing it and it is the only way I was able to record Oblivion. And I don't know why. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea why it's the only way to record Oblivion. That makes no sense. Uh, the light's gonna change here. Um, so it's not just Dandicam. Uh, OBS did the same thing. You cannot record Oblivion in game recording mode. It just wouldn't happen. And that is the best way to record video games. So I was, obviously I can't use the webcam mode to record Oblivion through Bandicam. So I was using the screen capture and it is highly inefficient. It's, it's very resource uh, in intensive. It takes a lot of computer resources. So OBS couldn't do it either, um, but there's three versions of capturing what's on the screen in OBS. No one seems to like to record this game the way all the other games that I've recorded uh, ever. Uh, I don't know why, uh, what's going on with Oblivion, it's just the way it is. It's also on top of that, it's the most unstable game that I've ever played in my entire life of 41 years, and I'm not making that up. Oblivion is so unstable and so prone to crashes. Uh, all the other games on my channel since 2020 have used Bandicam in all in the same game recording mode. So apparently to use the screen capture mode that I was using with Bandicam, as I said, was the most uh, inefficient and worst way to record video games, use up a lot of resources. So when you compare Oblivion, because Oblivion and Fallout 4 are both being put out at the same time on my channel right now, there's a big difference. Uh, Fallout 4 is came out 2015 and believe me came out 2006 so nine years difference and fallout 4 has the high resolution patch that i applied to it which might take um that has nothing to do with me that's with everybody sometimes loading from cell inside to outside or outside to inside takes 20 30 seconds when normally the old way would have been a couple seconds and that's not my computer it's not me recording it that's everybody who suffered from that and yes i did to get the, uh some patch off of uh, the nexus which is apparently supposed to really speed that up and sometimes it does but once in a while it'll just hang for 20 30 not hang just it's like it's not doing anything for 20 30 seconds you may see that a few times in my follow four videos don't know why uh, it didn't, doesn't work every time, but it seems to work probably half to three quarters of the time to speed up the transition. And that's a Bethesda thing. We're talking about Bethesda here. Great worlds that they create, but they don't exactly put 100% quality into uh, making it optimized, efficient, and uh, bug-free, especially bug-free. And we all saw that with Fallout 76. Although, as I said before, um, that wasn't the main company. That was an offshoot. I think that was a, a Texas company of, uh, of theirs, and they had worked on other games. They, I, I guess they bought out a company and renamed it or just hired a bunch of people from one company. That wasn't the main company uh, of Bethesda. Yeah, it's, it, it's an excuse, and there shouldn't be any excuses for their mess up, but it's what happens. All right, so uh, the main reason for how I was recording it is that, uh, how and the problems that came from Oblivion. So, but it's not 100% the reason uh, using that screen capture version of Bandicam. That's not why it would, it would, you know, bug out once in a while. It is, well, no, it's the reason why it would bug out once in a while, but it's not the reason why it's not lag free. So I made many videos, probably around five or six, testing out various changes to Bandicam. And I had to give up because none of them worked. And then I used OBS. And 
Somehow I was able to get the game recording version to work for like five minutes. And I looked at it and I thought, great, it's working. And then, uh, yeah, this is when um, Buck was talking to me uh, and I was talking to him, uh, responding. I was actually at uh, a pharmacy store <laughs> picking up uh, my kids' school, 2021 school pictures at the time when I responded to you, Buck on my phone and I, I said it's working great I just tested it all oh, the videos should be coming up but then I went back and I couldn't get it to work back in this game recording mode I don't even know what I did so uh, of the three they have a screen capture mode on OBS and then they have a Windows capture mode which is in the middle now if you can't use the game one go to the middle one Windows one and if you can't use that obviously you have to go to the highly inefficient one. same thing with Bandicam uses which is just the screen capture and I didn't want to do that because I'd be back to square one. But it was doing the same thing. It was, it was every few, every 20, 30 seconds, sound would cut out for a couple seconds. Or uh, it would just like free, screen would freeze and you'd hear sound, the normal noise of the game being recorded and me talking, but I, the screen didn't move for like 10 seconds. And I'm like, this, this is unusable. Uh, so I went and I looked up how to optimize uh, sorry OBS and I mean I did before but I watched somebody do it again and I did everything they did and it started to work it worked fine um, uh, worked about 99% where 95% where I wanted to be some of the faces became pixelated so I made three videos first one I didn't see any pixelation put it out the second two in that batch the last two had some pixelated faces and I didn't see it till it was done I thought after seeing the first one everything's fine um, so yeah, that happened, and then I had to go and look up how to optimize OBS for 4K game recording. So getting very specific there, and I had to up the bitrate to match it, and I haven't seen any issues since, so, uh, just teething issues, I guess. Uh, using a new recorder, you, I mean, I would love just to say, I'm not gonna put out a video till it's 100% perfect, and that, that is how I would like to be. But half the time, I don't even realize these things are happening. So when I put up, like, especially that Garand and Tears video is where it was really bad. I know Buck commented on that, wondering if what's going on. I didn't even know it was it was doing that. And I don't know why. That, why Bandicam all of a sudden started doing that. Totally messed up. And But OBS was doing it too. Until I don't even know what I did. I'm just glad it works. <laughs> it works now. There's no problems. So I don't know what I was doing in OBS either, but it was doing the same thing that it did with Bandicam 4. I did a whole batch of three videos. Oh, I had to do... I had to do the same videos three times. And they're an hour each. So we're talking nine hours to get it down right. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, that is what I went through. So, okay, well the first time I didn't know it was happening on Bandicam until I looked at it, and then I saw this is unusable. And then I went and did OBS five minutes after getting in game mode, thought everything was fine, couldn't do game mode, did it the Windows mode, same problems I had with uh, the Bandicam. Then I, I uh, and I had thought it worked fine, and I did another three videos, so it's another three hours, six hours in total here. Well, they're 45 minutes to an hour, I'm just gonna say an hour. And then <laughs> and I had to do it again because it was unusable, so another three times. <laughs> another three videos, same stuff, so I had it down. Completely, I knew exactly what was going to happen. I don't like to do that, man. I had to spread it out because try doing that in one day, you you just be like, oh my god, I'm going to start tearing my goddamn hair out. So yeah, it's frustrating. I had to like just you know forget it. I'll do it another day. <laughs> I wasn't sleeping very well at that time, anyways. <laughs> Combine those two things. That's uh, that's that's hell. And having to take care of your kids and do everything you normally do at home. So. I had one point I had seriously considered the possibility that I wouldn't be able to create any more Oblivion videos and that would that had me depressed because if it was just going to be like that then all I would get is people complaining and you know they think my whole channel is like that but uh yeah so I did some more research on OBS uh, I got the pixelation issue fixed watch that video today it is up Monday the December 27th first as far as I know perfect video of Oblivion on OBS. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, I didn't sit and watch the entire thing. I would just skip through and check. Uh, I, you know, that's just what I've done. So some things may, I may have missed, but I doubt it. It looks pretty, pretty good to me. 
So, however, the since the game recording mode on Bandicam works so well with the games that it does work for, like it does literally will not start recording for Oblivion. Uh, so the games that does record for, it works great. And I like it. I'll keep on using Bandicam for everything but Oblivion. And one of the big reasons for that is it also shows me the FPS display. So I know when I'm recording, um, I use the same recording button as uh, OBS and Bandicam together. Um, but Bandicam, sorry, OBS does not show me where or if I'm recording or not. I just kind of like have to press F12. And you don't always know. Like you could go for half an hour and um, you, you don't know. Like I, that used to get me. Not when I come back in 2020, but back in the day when I was using Fraps. That got me once in a while when I was first doing it and I, I didn't have it all down. I didn't know if I was recording or not, so I missed some stuff. And I, I still remember that well. And uh, yeah. So that's always in the back of my mind. I gotta know when I'm recording. Show me the FPS. If it's red, it's recording. If it's green, it's ready to go. And plus it also tells me the FPS of the video. So it is nice to have a backup recorder in case Bandicam doesn't work out for anything in the future. So for that block troll that I blocked around three weeks back who left a really nasty message about my Oblivion videos, who believed my computer was too slow to properly record Oblivion, you're way off, man. It was the screen capture mode I was using with Bandicam that was resp responsible for the horribleness that you saw once in a while. It wasn't constant. If all my videos were a constant horribleness, I would have no, no, no viewers. Nobody would watch my stuff. However, just like Morrowind, this is the caveat, the game is old. Not programmed with the best optimization, and on top of that, it has 4K graphics uh, and mods thrown in at it. When you save, or it auto-saves, or when an outdoor cell loads while you're outdoors, it might stop for half a second. So that could look like lag. You don't see this in Skyrim or Fallout 4 where saves are seamless and outdoor cell to cell transli transitions are seamless as well. So it's not that I have a bad computer, not at all. Uh, as I just upgraded it completely over the last year, it was the software that I was using to record Oblivion as well as the updated graphics to an old engine and the old engine. So. All of that combined, that's what you would get. Um, so I can never completely eliminate lagging like when I'm, you know, flying along my horse and an autosave comes and stops for half a second and then I, I can't I can't eliminate that. That's the game. It doesn't matter if it's no mods in there to enhance the graphics or not, that's the game. So don't come after me for that. That's just what I have to work with. Don't blame me for it. So Oblivion is still it's a very old game and it still crashes on me. But hopefully even less so with OBS uh, using a better capture mode screen ca or recorder than Bandicam with its uh, screen capture, which is awful. And because of the constant crashes, I have an autosave mod installed that saves every five minutes. So on top of that, you'll see that. It would just say autosave on the top left for a second. It's just old, inefficient programming. Um, I've always felt that Oblivion was rushed, rushed for Bethesda, and because Bethesda seems to take forever to do their work, but for Oblivion, uh, came up four years after uh, Morrowind, and Morrowind got, I think, 2003, 2004, it got its expansions, and Oblivion came out in 2006. So that's quite, quite a lot for Bethesda, even though, I mean, the engine, the graphics were less, there wasn't as much voice acting, and animation but still that for Bethesda that's quite a lot that's fast it's very fast for them so I, I there's no worries with Sky, with that Skyrim or Fallout 4 uh, there's no delay when it saves or when you're transitioning from cell to cell outside as for Fallout 3 and New Vegas since they use the Oblivion engine I don't know I don't I, they might have a bit of lag on it, but you're also not flying along with your horse, which makes it seem to show up even worse. But it is nice to know that Oblivion will look a lot better from now on. I'm happy with it. I was very relieved when I figured out how to do it without it messing up. Uh, I'm also choosing not to go with any other um, Bethesda or Bethesda engine games. Uh, I'm not going to do total overhauls. Uh, graphics enhancing overhauls um, because 
on top of the old engines like Fallout 3 and New Vegas, I just don't want them to be problems. I know I watched a guy of uh, Metal Canyon play through the entire game of New Vegas to the end. And it was, he started crashing a lot in like the last 10, 20 videos. It was like at one point, one video was every couple minutes and he would come back like, ah, oh, it just crashed again. Right? It was, I, I don't want that. I'd like to avoid it. And he did have a graphics enhancing mod. And that's not really based upon your computer. That's the, the mods interacting with an unstable game. And the game might just, even without mods, it might be crashing at that point anyways. I happen, I remember Oblivion crashing just by adding in a couple mods. Uh, oh my gosh, I spent years, literally years, not constant, but off and on for probably about four years trying to get Oblivion to work and to play through it. I couldn't get it to work. This is actually almost as far as I've gotten. I, I finished the mage quest and got a little bit further in the fighter guild, fighters guild quests. So I finished the mage quest line and that's as far as I've gotten and on top of what I've already done. I did all the city quests. So I'm almost where I, I was at the maximum for Oblivion. It'd be nice to see new things for me. It's not like, I mean, lots of it I've forgotten. So, I mean, it's not like it's, oh, I remember everything, but I remember some of it. So yeah, no more overhauls, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to use mods to maybe enhance some looks, but Oblivion, or sorry, Morrowind, I did a complete overhaul of just about everything. Um, yeah, so you, you look through, there's on the Elder, uh, Elder Scrolls Nexus, the Nexus mods, there's, you can go to these overhaul things and they have like 200 different, uh, mods to download and telling you how to optimize. I'm not going to go through that anymore. It was fast for Fallout 4 and I did update some things, but I didn't go out of my way. I could make it look a lot better, but I don't want to. It looks pretty good as it is. Maybe not in 10 years, but for 2021, it's not bad. It's pretty good. I got, what did they come up with? The high res patch for Fallout 4 in 2017? I haven't played too much with it. In fact, with what you've seen, that's the most I've played with it. Uh, it looks, in fact, I never played with it before. Sorry. Yeah, I never used it because people were saying it, it it's buggy. It slowed the game down. So I, d I never bothered with it. And I have finished the main game of Fallout 4. I didn't do that island, uh, which I forget the name of. And I haven't done the one... Um, Nuka World, I haven't done that. I went and I I, I kind of joined with the Raiders and that's about it, as far as I got. I went and looked around Nuka World and I'm like, I, I, I didn't even know like this is whole other area. Like it's a fair size expansion. I just thought it was like go and join these Raiders and either have them on as your, whatever your workforce or your Raiders, you become a Raider or, or not. But there's a whole area and you go investigate it. Um, just like the normal game map. It's not as big, anywhere near as big, but it's still a fair size. And there's new monsters, new creatures there. Interesting. I just found this out by um, when I was starting modding Fallout 4 just a few months ago. Yeah, the reasons too many problems come up with uh, overhauls. And uh, I, I don't want to go through what I did with Oblivion when I first did that. That was even worse than Morrowind experience. Just to get it, that took me a long time to get it working right. I don't want to do that again. And then all the crashes and then all the, the possible lagginess. So I want no graphic issues or lag. I will look to upgrade and add some things, but not complete overhauls. It may look nice, but you know, with the all the mods and the overhauls, but it's not that easy to record. So getting Oblivion to work right as I want it to in the very last week was a very joyful experience for me. Too bad I had to go through some really awful family drama on Christmas Day, which has pretty much ruined Christmas for me this year. So, unfortunately, very, very nasty experience. So, um, I'm trying to keep on being positive, but what can you do about family? Not my wife, not my kids, uh, family outside of that. And that has everything to do with this video being delayed today. You know, I was feeling pretty nasty yesterday about it. So, uh, on to the other topics. I research all my military information and I try to match it up with uh, historical things. Uh, Fallout, f with Fallout being on, on an alternate Earth with 132 years of different history since 1945 to 2077 when the bombs drop, I first look at what it was like during World War II and try to match it up. Things that happened decades later, I will take... Um, over things that just happened in the last 30 to 50 years of our timeline. So things that may have changed in the military, US military especially, because it's on US, it's in the US. Yeah, even if it happened in the 60s or 70s, 
you know, change. There's a lot of changes of whatever metals, uh, procedures, doctrines, uh, all these different things, weapons, all these. Uh, yeah. So you can't say, well, this is the way we did it in the army. Why don't you do it in Fallout 4 like that? No, it's different. It's 132 years of alternate history. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's not the same thing. However, um, if I'm very off on any military information from vets or anyone currently in the U.S. military or any military in the world for that matter, uh, let me know in the comments. I take these things seriously and I look it all up. I don't just pull things out of my butt. I'm not a vet and the closest I ever came to being involved in the military was when I was 25 and seriously considered it. That would have been like 2001. So. However, that being said, I am a history buff, especially with World War II. That is actually my favorite area. Era. <laughs> I had great uncles that were in the Canadian Navy and the Air Force. And yes, the Canadian Navy was huge by the end of the war. Hundreds of corvettes to help against the U-boats in the Atlantic. I had some stories from my great uncle who passed in 94. My, my grandparents themselves were too young. Like my grandpa was 12 when the war started. Or was he? He was born in 29... He was 11 when it was, no, 10 when the war started. He was too young. His brothers fought. He had four brothers. He, they fought in the war. None of them died. I don't have any relatives that died. I thought I did until I, I talked to my mom again a little while back. No, none of them died. I, my great uncle had a lot of stories. I wish he lived longer because I was young when he died. I was 18. And I was just in the last few years before that getting into history. And I just love World War II, you know. He told me some stories. He was a, a gunner on the a bomber. I think he joined the British Air Force. He wasn't Canadian. He, he was Canadian. But he did. He joined the British Air Force. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. And he told me he liked. He didn't like bombing cities. Um, th it just didn't feel right with him. He preferred. He was transferred. He tra got transferred from the European theater to Asian theater, where they were dropping off relief supplies for. I think in Burma for the British there. Uh, supplies and whatever and and helping if they were bombing anything they're bombing soldiers or enemy troops not civilians I wouldn't like doing that either that's that's horrible I understand why everything happened it's just I wouldn't feel comfortable being in a bomber killing civilians so yeah but uh, that's today that's not back then yeah he told me a lot of stories I miss him I wish he lived longer so I hope the new characters in red that say in character my thumbnails doesn't jar anyone or put them off, but I believe it is helping my videos get noticed. I've had an increase in subs lately, and I believe it's my uh, in-character notices, letting, uh, people are, are seeing it. YouTube is so fickle that one cannot be certain about anything until you look at it long term, but I think it's helping. Okay, so the real big news for me is my sleep. Yes, it has really improved in the last 10 days. And I'm using hypnotic sleep therapy to get me to relax all my body to fall asleep. It's working quite well for me. The last two months have been especially brutal um, with me getting an average a couple hours of sleep a night. That's that really um, it's turning me into a wreck. That's hard for anyone. I need I preferably would want eight hours sleep for me. I know some people get by in a few hours. I don't know how they do it. I'm just messed up if I don't get seven to nine hours. So I realized that I'm just not relaxing myself enough to fall or stay asleep. I need to focus more on that. And what I've been doing has really helped lately. No drugs. Just listen to somebody on YouTube telling me to relax this part of my body. And then I just by the end of it, I'm just ready to pass out. So I will keep at it. Yeah. So uh, let me know about the Oblivion videos from here on in that uh, the one... What is it called? It's the one with the picture of the guy with the ghost. <laughs> the ghost picture. Comes out Monday, December 27th. So let me know if there's any issues. Now, on to the Q&A. Night uh, Reese. Yes, I heard how they say it in the game, so I'm going to call you the same as they say it in the game. <laughs> Night Reese. Um, yeah, I tried not to fight with him <laughs> too much. <laughs> I remember the first time I encountered Night Reese in Fallout 4. I was asking what the hell his problem was, and we kind of got into it. I, I did my, not my best, but I did try to avoid a, as much of it as possible this time around. <laughs> yeah, that's why uh, I think I didn't end up liking him. This guy is just, uh, you yeah, know, likes to fight with you. 
All right, so uh, five questions here. How goes your live stream plans? That's number one. Number two, did you get the Hearts of Iron No Step Back expansion? If so, how do you like it? Three, any plans to give Elder Scrolls Online a try? Four, which YouTube channel did you last subscribe to? Why don't you guess which one? <laughs> and five, and finally, do you celebrate Christmas? All right, Knight Reese, how goes your live stream plans? <sighs> well, I kind of, I didn't give up on it, but I gave up on it temporarily because of my crazy sleep that I was going through. I was barely able to keep up with my regular videos and, um, it's, it's going to come again. I think I'll try for this January after Neverwinter Nights is off to its start. So the second question, did you get the Hearts of Iron No Step Back expansion? If so, how do you like it? You pay attention. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. The main DLC and patch worked great, the main one. So I played my favorite nation of Japan up to around 42. Uh, the problem was that the hotfixes Paradox put out then took off a few of my mods. One of them I cannot play without. I created it to give Japan and Germany things that I believe they should have that are they are lacking from the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why... Um, uh, that's what modding is for. I don't make... this. Th so, I do make mods for Hearts of Iron. This is pretty much the only game I, I do make mods for. Because this is my favorite strategy game. And I'm not just role-playing. I'm of two minds. Left brain, I like my strategy. Right brain, I like my fantasy... I like to be off in my fantasy world, and I like to be off in my strategy. Uh, it's not strategy so much as um, just thinking, uh, planning things out. You know, I mean, what, what else defines strategy? Uh, yeah, so I guess it would be strategy type games. Um, but Hearts of Iron 4 is my favorite left brain uh, game. I guess Skyrim and then Fallout 4 would be my favorite right brain game. <laughs> but. Fallout 4 with the sediment building, is that completely right brain? I, yeah, there's some left brain in there too. So, uh, I, I could only play for a few days until they put out the hot patches and then it would, my mod wouldn't work. So, yes, I do give Japan and Germany a little advantage. Uh, when I'm not playing as Germany, if Germany does not do well, as in do the stupid thing Paradox likes to have them do, which is attack everybody at once, well... Not all at once, but within a week or two, or within a few months, they're at war. On, they're at war with Denmark and Norway. They're at war with France and uh, Benelux, and they're at war with Russia, and they're at war with Yugoslavia and the UK. And they can't do that. In 1940 or 39, they just get swamped. It's a long, slow death. So if you're not playing Germany, the game's kind of ruined. I hate playing as the US if Germany is dead before I even join the war. It, is, it just feels like I just wasted possibly 10, 20, 15 hours of my time to get to that point. Oh my god. So yes, I, I buffed Germany up only uh, in their tech. Now, declaring war on, on everybody at once. Um, yeah, it's not only tech. Sorry, there's a little bit of combat. Uh, I give them more whatever, a small 5% buff to their combat. But other nations get things like this. I give them a 15% uh, increase to their research speed, whereas Russia also gets 10%. I know they only start with three research slots, but they get 10% after uh, certain, uh, what do you call it, focus is is done. And then UK gets 10%, and the US gets a crazy research bonus of, it could be up to, with the trade laws, it could be up to about almost 20%, and on top of that, they get a sixth research slot. So they're... It's ridiculous. So Germany shouldn't be considered a normal nation when it comes to research. They should get a bit of a head time, a bit of a boost. So that's why I give them 15% and a little bit of combat. And I love to play against a nation, an Aeon nation doing that. I like, And I like playing as that, although it does make it as Germany. It does make it a little easier than it would otherwise. But it doesn't feel realistic to be behind in so many things. But with the new DLC, they've taken out the Doctrine, so... From research so it makes it sped research up i don't know anyways i feel that's where it should be plus it helps japan um my mod helps japan with uh naval research not research naval experience through the focuses about 200 in total i've added to it they're lacking that otherwise they have to just train their ships uh using up precious fuel that they may not have in the first half of the, the game 
So they needed that because they have a very professional navy historically. So uh, also when you conquer China, I give you a research bonus uh, with one of the focuses. So which Japan badly means they're way behind. I, once they conquer China and they don't have anything more than just the resources from there and perhaps some manpower, it seems a little little off to me when you conquer a somewhat major nation not to get some research bonus, but especially since they're so far behind the states. Like they have, they, because of their militarism, they're minus 5% research and that's a little irritating. By the end of the game, it, you really feel it. Like 43, 44, 45, you're way behind everybody. So without that mod, I don't really like to play the game and it doesn't work anymore. Plus the German flag thing. I like to use the historical one and that doesn't work either. So I don't know what uh, Paradox did, but they messed it up. So I'm waiting for them to fix that. Another hot patch or an official patch. It could take weeks from now since they're on holidays. Could take months. I'm hoping not months. It's my favorite game. I was having a lot of fun before that, but whatever. So uh, any plans to give the Elder Scrolls Online a try? If you can clone me, and have that other me start playing it, then that could work. You can work nights and record the videos. <laughs> but in truth, I don't know. Uh, see things like that I'd love to record, but it's an MMO. But it's not the same as a single player game, so I don't know. I don't really want to do a live thing, otherwise people are going to be asking me. Then I'm back to making... Uh, uh, Heart no, Hearts of Iron. Project 1999 EverQuest videos again. And no. I don't really want to be doing an MMO. I'd ha it has to be story focused. I don't mind the idea of it. Uh, I could possibly fit it in. I'm very creative. I'm sure I could if I focused on it in one of my slots of my videos that I'm doing. Um, so just have a character and he can go through. I'll show the, the different things he's going through, especially when there's you know conversations with NPCs. I don't know how it would work with other characters or players. I mean, <sighs> so. I'm kind of swamped as it is, especially with live stream being something I'd like to do with single player games, just for fun. Uh, I don't want to commit to getting into an MMO and showing off the MMO. People will start to want to see that. So which YouTube channel did you last subscribe to? This one. Yeah, this guy right here, Andrew Green. I didn't even know that's what it's called. It just come, keeps coming up on my phone. Um, he's the one that's... Uh, the hypnotic sleep. I don't even see the video here. Here it is. So you can see I've been watching it. I just watched. It's like an hour and 14 minutes. I don't think I've gotten past half an hour. I just, I'm ready to go to sleep by then. Yeah, so I've, I've been watching that every night for like the last... Okay, not one night. Not Christmas night because I was very upset. I took a, a sleeping pill to go to sleep that night. Yeah. Such bullshit. Actually, that's wrong. No, I took a sleeping pill and I used this. So yeah, I, I had to try to have a good sleep. Yeah, so uh, I would recommend it if you are having trouble sleeping. Andrew Green. Andrew Green Hypnosis. Seems to work for me. And just select what you want. Waterfall of Light Tropical Jungle. What the heck is that? I don't know. His sleep thing really works for me personally. He doesn't have many videos here. But he's... Yeah. It, there's no list. Let's see. Videos. Oh, he has more videos than I thought. Well, he just started doing this a year ago, but his channel is even older than mine. Interesting. Yeah. An up-and-comer. And finally, do you celebrate Christmas? I honestly don't know anyone that doesn't. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, yeah, sorry. And I wrote this down, so... Uh, I do know, I did know some Jehovah Witnesses growing up. I wasn't close to them. I did have a school friend, though, that I had no idea was even Jehovah Witness until one day he came with a friend to my door preaching. I happened to answer it, too. And I was probably 17 years old at the time. Weird. <laughs> it was a weird experience. Just finding out he's Jehovah Witness that way. It wasn't like a close friend, but it was some guy. I, I was in my class, and I was kind of like just a school friend with him sat near him and, and he was sat near me and we just would talk seemed like a normal dude and i'm not bashing jova witnesses you to each their own uh just look at me um so just so it's out there my family was atheist when i was grew up but not strictly so like we're not talking hardcore i didn't even know what a hardcore atheist upbringing would be like we still celebrated christmas and easter had family get-togethers and dinner christmas presents played christmas music and yes even the religious ones no one 
no one was strict about anything. I, uh, my family's changed since then. Uh, I don't have contact with my dad. I haven't for over 20 years, so I don't know what's going on with his life. But I think the reason for that was a, it was more of a rebellion that started off by my grandparents on both sides. Just to get away from whatever church they may have grown up with. And I'm guessing. I'm throwing that out as a guess. Don't quote me on that. But my mom, sister, and I have come to find God and Jesus in our own way. That famous video of the story of Jesus that was out in the 80s or is it the 90s? I'm sure some people would know what I'm talking about. I, as VHS, we got rid of all that stuff about 10, 10, 15 years. Well, it's 2021, well, probably about 12 years back. Got rid of all of it. So we don't, I don't have that video anymore. I'm sure I could find it if I wanted to. But that video uh, made me more comfortable with Christianity. Uh, as I accepted it from someone who was giving it away from free. I remember when I was 16. I think that they were trying to, I don't know if they are preaching. I just remember somebody coming down they gave it to a friend i asked if he wanted and he said no and, and he gave it to me and so i watched it out of curiosity gave me a bit it was, there was a lot of love and positivity in it and just made me feel more comfortable around it because i mean all i grew up was with my parents bashing christians and stuff like that but i don't even think they knew what they were talking about it's just that they was put into their heads by their parents and who knows i it could go back to my grand great grandparents i don't know i don't know where, where that began I just now, we've found spirituality, not really religion, spirituality, uh, love, um, greater wish for understanding and awareness of the universe we live in and how things work. And that's where I am personally. Yeah, so as for that hip sleep hypnosis thing, that I personally see that as a gift to me by God or an angel or whoever. Uh, working for God. I wasn't even looking for it. It was just on my YouTube feed on my phone uh, one night as I was struggling to sleep again. So I listened to it and I slept around 10 hours just from listening to it. I woke up again, which is, I don't know why I keep waking up in the middle of the night, but I was able to go back to sleep within minutes. And that kind of what keeps happening to me. That's nice. Just have to keep relaxing your body and then I'll just listen to it again if I wake up and I feel like I, you know, I'm wide awake. I need to go to sleep. So another thing that I have is a bit of a heart condition, and that doesn't help. Uh, my wife is a nurse, so she would work nights. She did shift work. She doesn't do nights anymore. She's just a, she's like a supervisor now. But when she would work nights, like I guess she did that for about 20 years, and not just nights, nights and days. So shift work off and on, two on, two off. She um, two days, two nights, and then four off is what I mean to say. She, uh, she just got used to be able to sleep anytime she wanted to, and I could never do that. And one of the reasons I have problems with that is I'll have a, a nap during the day, and it'll be like a, a quick nap. And then I'll wake up, and then I'm wide awake, and my heart is just, like, pounding. I don't know why it just seems to do that during the day. At night, it doesn't really do that. But during the day, and uh, I can't fall asleep. I'm wide awake. Like, I'm almost like I have adrenaline rushing through me. And uh, I can literally feel my heart going for up to even half an hour afterwards. So there's no sleep. There's no way I can get back to sleep. So she's always used to say, "Won't you sleep during the day?" And I, I can't. I can't do it. I don't know why. It's just how my my heart isn't the best. I guess. All right. So let's move on to the next set of questions. To Buck, where where's your questions, Buck? There you are. What is your number one? What is your game of the year, 2021? Two. What was your favorite meal that ha you had in last week? <laughs> are you running out of things to ask me, Buck? <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. You ask me what my favorite color is. It's fine. It's just a funny question. Three, what will your New Year's resolution be? Four, what's your favorite Christmas song? Five, what do you want for Christmas? So there's actually some pretty good questions in there. So don't think I'm making fun of you. <laughs> just a funny question. Number two is a funny question. I had to actually think about it. <laughs> All right, number one, what is your game of the year, 2021? So this is a bit of a problem for me because I don't think I bought a 2021 game. I looked through my list and I'm pretty sure I didn't buy any 2021 game. Uh, DLCs, yes. The last big game purchase was Cyberpunk 2077, and that was December of 2020. Actually, I think I did buy. Um, I'll talk about this game coming. I did buy a game, but it's a 2020 game as well, even er a little bit earlier than Cyberpunk 2077. So, I did buy that game this year. It was Crusader Kings 3. So lacking that, I'll have to say what new games for me I played this year, though they could be years old since they were originally put out. 
War Thunder would probably be the biggest one for me. I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of frustration as well. It's what happens in all PvP games. Holy crap, some frustration. <laughs> like I typed in, I need into the, gen the chat. I'm going to take a break from my mental well-being for a while. This is not helping. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, it's not due to anyone cheating. It's just the games can be... some Once in a while, the matches can be very, very one-sided. <laughs> you don't even get to kill anybody. You just get wasted. And then other games, like, I, I, I do do great. I don't know. It's, it's just one of those PvP things. Timing, skill, uh, your teammates. Everything put into it. And, uh, yeah. But it's a subject that I love, you know, warplanes, tanks, warships. I don't take it too seriously as a game like I do with some of the RPGs, like how I get into it with my character, of course. But it can be a lot of fun. So that's what I plan to do my first live stream with. I don't know. I know uh, Night Reese doesn't. He's never played the game. And it may not be your thing, but just take a look at it. It's me, my voice, talking. <laughs> Pathfinder Kingmaker is also a really good game. Thank you, Buck. Uh, surprisingly good, actually. Thanks for the recommendation. Um, I needed to play something to, excuse me, <coughs> to just get away and escape the last month since my sleep was so bad and I couldn't make videos because of how messed up I was. So I just got into it. I'm quite far into the game now. Also, uh, for this year, The Wolf Among Us, I played for the first time. I know that game's from five or six years. I think it was a 2015 game. Crusader Kings 3. It's a really good game. I've been playing that a lot this year. Just getting into RimWorld right now in the last few days with, uh, well, just before Christmas actually, so last four or five days, with the latest DLC as well. I know, I think the DLC came out a month or two back, a few months ago. Then there's the DLC, new DLC for Stellaris, and I like Star Stellaris as well. Uh, then I bought U-Boat and was playing that, and also Beyond Two Souls as well. I finished that game. As well as Wolf Among Us. Pretty good games. I, I didn't see any woke stuff in Beyond Two Souls despite the main actor. Which I was like, uh. But she did it pretty good. She's a good actor. I haven't had as much uh, a chance to play the DLC for Hearts of Iron 4 as I said. If you do play Hearts of Iron 4, use my music mods. If you're watching my channel, you need to know that I have 9 music mods for Hearts of Iron 4. I put in the same amount of care to those uh, those mods b back in 2018 to 2020 before I came and started making uh, videos again on my channel. I, same amount of care as I do with those, the videos on my channel as I do with the, um, the mods. So, which means that they're meant for you to get into a role-playing mood for the nation you're playing as. Just look at my mods on Steam, and that's the, my banner, this is Steam Link. I have over 3,000 songs in those nine music mods. And with this new DLC, one of the really awesome new bonuses that wasn't even listed, the game loads really fast now. And my music mod, you, when you have all nine activated, would slow it down for a minute or two. It would it would seem like it's, I don't know, parsing through all the songs every time. And it could be a minute or two of a wait. I even had a couple of people complain about that, but that's out of my control since I added so much music to the game. You still have to go in and activate the game, the music mods in the game. So whatever you want. I just keep them all loaded. Whatever nation I play as, I just uh, activate it. It doesn't matter. You can have them all activated it's because it's tailored to the nation that you're playing. I guess, yeah, in that case, I don't even have to deactivate them. I can have them all always all activated at the same time. So um, now it's pretty much instant when it loads up. So my music are music from 20s, 30s, and 40s, as well, like real, genuine music, as well as music made to fit for the time, like from movies since then, uh, World War II, or documentary music. And depending if you're winning or losing, you'll get different music. Well, come on and play. As Germany, if you take over Paris, you start to hear a few French songs now and then. Uh, not too many, but once in a while, yes. So, th etc. Things like that. So uh, it's very much tailored to uh, what's going on in the game. And I just love, especially playing the States, I have so much great music. Really gets me into, obviously I didn't, I don't come from back then, but I'm imagining what it's like. And on top of this, I, I found it really awesome. I put in commercials from the times. <laughs> yep, from the, some commercials for the, uh, it would be for the UK, Canada, and the US, the English speaking nations. I don't know if I did Australia, maybe Australia and New Zealand also would get them. It's been a few years since 
I looked at uh, who gets the commercials. I know Canada, US, and UK get them. So commercials, and they would play once in a while. And commercials from the actual era. And I, I find that really awesome. Yeah, so I mean, it would be also tailored, like the War Bond one for the US. It's Bugs Bunny War Bonds from 1943. That's in, in there. Things like that. Not too many. I think there's maybe 20 commercials at most out of all the hundreds of songs for each of the nations. And the US, oh, I had to cut some of it. I just had to go with the best ones because the mods can only be a certain size. And you can shrink the size of the songs, uh, but the quality degrades. So I had to pick the best. Otherwise, I could have 10,000 US songs just from the time period. Yeah, I think they've got a 3 gigabyte size or, or something like that. That's unfortunate. But, um, yeah. Uh, I'm very proud of those mods. I, I use them when I play Hearts of Iron 4. Number two. What was your favorite meal you had in the last week? In the last week? Not the Christmas dinner, that's for sure. It didn't help that the fish was way, way too salty. Gross, actually. But probably the Christmas Eve meal that I cooked at home for everybody. Uh, for my family. Some, my two boys and my wife. Boneless chicken, American salad, and some potato wedges. Something simple. So three, what will your New Year's resolution be to sleep well and get healthy, healthier? Number four, what's your favorite Christmas song? Easy, Christmas, baby, please come home. And I don't know if you know this song, go look it up. <laughs> Next would be, I don't want any copyright issues, so I'm not going to play anything. Next would be Mary's Boy Child from Boney M. And my mom used to play Boney M when I was little. Kind of, I have fond memories of that. And I think they make good music. Doesn't ha uh, helps. <laughs> They're also Jamaican. My wife, although she, I, she she's heard of them, she didn't really know them too well. Yeah, as my wife would say, back a bush. <laughs> she's a little back a bush, not really, but it's like back a bush is like saying hillbilly or redneck. Back a bush. She wasn't really back a bush, but they. She makes fun of people who are back a bush. I guess the people she thinks are uh, from Jamaica that are really stupid and ignorant. And uh, she uh, she comes from, uh, where is it? It's a mountainous area. She didn't come from the beach. If you're wondering if she grew up on the beach, no. She grew up where in a mountain mountainous area. Um, uh, Man Manchester? No, I'm not sure. I'd have to ask her again. Sorry, I sound kind of ignorant right now. Kind of like the southwestern part of Jamaica. Jamaica is not that big of an island, but the roads are pretty bad, so... Can take a while to get around. Apparently, that's what I've been told, anyways. So, uh, I also appreciate I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas, which has a bit of a meaning for me, especially with the music mods I created for Hearts of Iron 4. That song came out in December of 1942, and the documentary The War, which I, I own, I very, I've watched it a few times, I like that, uh, which came out around 15 years back, I think it's 2006 video, or series of videos showed how the the troops on Guadalcanal the US troops on Guadalcanal listened to it and dreamed of being back at home in the US so number five what do you want for Christmas happiness I want happiness I didn't get it but maybe I'll get it for my new years and good health and good sleep so I think that's enough for this thanks for watching keep watching oblivion or it should look a lot better now we'll see you later